We're going to talk about sustainable supply chain management. This is a very important topic for companies because companies have outsourced increasingly a lot of the production activities, a lot of the service activities that they used to do in-house themselves, in other words. And that means that companies can't really claim to be sustainable unless their supply chain is sustainable. This is a topic that companies have to struggle with. Uh, they have to develop a sustainable supply chain. But this is also a topic that my colleague Joe and I have worked on for some time now. We're going to talk about a number of issues to do with sustainable supply chain management. We're going to build on material from our new book, uh, which is called Purchasing Supply Chain Management, a sustainability perspective. We're going to provide an introduction, first of all, where we're going to define some of the key concepts and look at a couple of fundamental supply chain management models and just introduce the concept of sustainable supply chain management. We're going to look at also issues to do with developing uh, a sustainable supply chain from the point of view of trying to minimize the risk. But we're also going to look at issues to do with creating value, looking at sustainability, sustainable supply chain management as a way to create value and competitive advantage for the company. We're going to look at issues to do with sustainable sourcing. We're going to look at issues to do with developing what's called a closed loop supply chain. And we're going to look at issues to do with green logistics. What we're going to talk about in this short video is the first of these topics, which is a brief introduction to sustainable supply chain management. So what we do here is first of all to look briefly at some definitions of supply chain management so that we provide a basic level of understanding of what we mean when we talk about supply chain management. We'll look at the key components of supply chain management and then we'll provide an initial understanding of how sustainability impacts on supply chain management. We're going to first of all look at the basics of supply chain management. What we can say is that fundamentally, if we are to understand the cost of a product or a service that a customer buys, then we have to understand how that is the result of a supply chain. And that supply chain takes in a number of different parties, a number of different companies that make up that supply chain. We can also look at it from a value point of view. So the value that a customer gets from a product is likewise the result of everything that happens within that supply chain. So in other words, what we need to look at is really the totality of the supply chain from the end customer to the ultimate end supplier. And our simple diagram here shows the basic components of a supply chain in terms of sourcing, materials, components, and so forth from suppliers, converting these into products and service packages for customers. Um, that's the production side. And then the distribution to customers. There are many different definitions of supply chain management. This one here is by a professor called Martin Christopher, and he defines supply chain management as the management of upstream and downstream relationships with suppliers and customers to deliver superior customer value at less cost to the supply chain as a whole. There are a few important uh, aspects here that we should concentrate on. One is that this definition highlights relationships with not only suppliers, but also customers. It introduces the terminology of upstream, which is the supplier facing side, and downstream, which is the customer facing side. And then this idea that what the whole supply chain should deliver is superior value to end customers. So that means better value than uh, what competitors deliver to the customers at less cost to the supply chain as a whole. If we look at this diagram here, it shows what a supply chain might look like. We have a focal company, as we might call it, in the middle. So that might be a final product manufacturer. So think about, for example, a car manufacturer. Think about a mobile phone manufacturer, and so on. Then we have the direct suppliers of components into these manufacturers. We call them first tier suppliers. Those suppliers in turn that supply into the first tier suppliers are called second tier suppliers and so forth. 
Likewise, on the customer and the distribution side, we can say that there are direct links and there are indirect links. First tier, second tier, and so forth. Of course, the reality is that very often supply chains are much more like complex networks. The links between the individual parties or actors within the supply chain are particularly important. Um, it's about product and material flow, and it's about information exchange as well. And an important challenge in supply chain management traditionally is to make sure that all the parties within the supply chain achieve the same information, for example, about end customer demand. But sustainability is really a critical supply chain management challenge because, as I already briefly said at the beginning, companies these days outsource a lot of the production activities, a lot of service provision. In fact, a lot of companies don't do that many things in-house anymore. But what they really do is that they manage this supply chain. And that also means that if we have to understand sustainability, and if a company wants to become sustainable, they have to implement sustainability within its supply chain. I mentioned that supply chain management is very much about information exchange. It's about getting a flow of, in, of information um, right across the supply chain. Sustainability and developing a sustainable supply chain is also about that, but it's about achieving visibility or transparency about um, a lot of other things, these things that concern the sustainability practices, ethical issues, social issues, environmental issues within the supply chain. Joe? Okay, it's also very important to consider the, uh, the structure of the supply chain, not in terms of just the uh, forward flow of products and the uh, flow of information in terms of demand, etc., but also uh, more and more today the return flow of products back from end customers back to the uh, source actually of, of production. So this model that we're showing here describes uh, the fact that uh, more and more today it's not a pure forward linear process but one which has feedback loops within it as well. Uh, the other important point we're making here is that there are three very important drivers to sustainable supply chain management. Originally coming from uh, regulatory uh, legislative requirements relating to uh, environmental standards, for pollution, etc., for how we deal with waste. But more and more today, we're, companies are having to deal with uh, exposure in their supply chain to risk. Uh, as Thomas already mentioned, where we have more and more visibility and transparency in the supply chain, uh, not only is that controlled by companies, uh, in some cases this can be out of their control as well, and therefore media may pick up on bad practices which are happening in your supply chain which you may not be aware of. Therefore, there is a risk here to reputation and potentially risk of things like fines, uh, and which therefore uh, give you a, an additional cost within the supply chain that may not have been planned originally. Again, more and more today, companies are also looking at where there may be opportunities uh, to both save costs, so where they may be reducing energy consumption, they may be able to reduce costs at the same time, or perhaps producing green products which are delivered by green supply chains, which then perhaps will be able to command a premium in the marketplace uh, from customers who really care about uh, obtaining sustainable products uh, from the uh, from the uh, suppliers that they use. Okay. One very good example of this would be Nike. Now Nike obviously is known for the uh, sportswear and particularly the sneakers that they produce, the sports shoes that they produce. And a while back they were exposed to some reputational risk where in their supply chain uh, it was found that uh, labour practices were not really conforming to standards on an international basis. So they have really reacted to this in a very positive way and looked at ways to not only minimize these risks, but also to obtain 
uh, a reputational advantage by taking on sustainability full on by developing products which we can almost say are made of rubbish themselves uh, by the fact that they are recycling content and using, reusing those in the shoes that are produced and also recycling products so they can be used for other uh, applications as well. Nike has really taken this from a, uh, from a supply chain perspective, put in a lot of practices, a lot of monitoring practices to make sure that their suppliers meet social standards, but also practices relating to making sure that overall the product itself uh, has a lower and lower footprint uh, and impact on the environment. This really takes us to one of the biggest uh, revolutions almost within supply chain management today uh, where we're seeing companies putting forward new designs of supply chains again further and further away from the traditional linear forward flow uh, supply chain that we showed you earlier to what we call a closed loop supply chain where the materials uh, that we use in manufacturing actually don't just come from the raw materials dug from the ground, uh, from the other raw material sources traditionally found in supply chains, but also from the end products that are used and uh, discarded at the end of their life. So as we said, there are legislative drivers behind this, but also there's an opportunity here for companies to look for ways to reduce cost and put forward products which are uh, greener in terms of recycled content and uh, more attractive for customers who are looking for sustainable products. So to conclude, we can say that supply chain management is looking at the whole chain from raw materials up to end customers, but also focusing on that return flow back to uh, the raw materials and reusing uh, products in the supply chain. It's really about maximizing the value and reducing uh, cost and time, while at the same time trying to balance this with uh, the imperatives of sustainability and looking at ways to achieve uh, opportunities from a, from a market perspective. So we can see that companies are looking for ways actively to reduce their environmental footprint and to have better and better social practices uh, to put in place and to make sure that they can comply with the compliance issues but also uh, look for opportunities to reduce risk and opportunities to win uh, market share and new customers.